Now it is again for beings limitless in number as space is limitless that they all have to be established in the supreme result of Mahamudra. Here and now I should decide that I want to take in the instruction of Mahamudra, consider them well and take them as a path to achieve the result for all such beings. With this noble attitude in my heart, which is called Bodhicitta, which he requests that we should listen to. So now we come to that part of the prayer for the recognition of Mahamudra, which is the wish form in our heart to achieve the very working basis for that path to go. And this wish is actually presented in two forms, one in the common sense of the working basis that we need and one in the particular, in the special sense. To start with the first one, it says, as long as this has not been achieved, connect with the previous, the from birth to birth, throughout all my lifetimes, without the reason being the name of evil deeds and suffering, be heard, may I enjoy the glory of the ocean of well-doing, of good, of virtue, and of well-being. <laughs> 구시 저거 구시 도봉 셰퍼젠테 모터제 바두 네 제와니 제와 세라나 세라 되네 네 감도 제나양 되네 주 딕바탕 디 누구 도하나 무엇을 제바탕 파샤 맹자나 마타바 디 동초 되네 주 기와 부마에서 기와 부숨초가 제베 디 누구 되네 비치 부숨초가 제토가 쇼고서 now the word meaning is pretty much straightforward and uh, saying that when previously we wished for the result of our virtuous actions to merge into the ocean of the four kayas of the Buddha. Here now the verse starts and says, as long as this result has not been achieved, then throughout all my lifetimes, from birth to birth, means wherever I will be born. I may not even hear the name of <coughs> evil doing, of ill wishing, doing, and of the result of that, of suffering. No need to mention that I directly engage in any harmful act or that I directly encounter suffering, not even the name of that I should hear, and instead the opposite should be present that I enjoy myself in the glory of the infinite ocean of well-doing and the result of that which is bliss and fortune. <laughs> We come to the second part of this wish for the perfect, excellent working basis for this path, and this in the particular way, and the wish <coughs> is expressed like this, leisure and endowments obtained in the supreme way, endowed with devotion, joyful effort and with intelligence. Following the good spiritual friend, I have obtained, may I have obtained 
the nectar of his hard advice. <clears throat> Without, in the accomplishment, the correct accomplishment, that there be any hindrance throughout my lifetimes, may I be enjoy, enjoying the genuine Dharma. Daddy, don't daddy. 탈바다 탐지체 맞고 방턱을 했지 말라. 저땐 체벌진 고개 아래. 너가 리그 두기 나네 미일 때 무슨 좋아. 미일 때 이제 나네 장 다가지에 남겨라 쭈성 누르는 거 최대. 근데 탈바다 탐지체 맞고 방주 때 이야슈 말 때네 초스 말라 말해. To achieve the final goal of the full awakening, awakening of a Buddha. We need a working basis, and this is described as the coming together of leisure and endowments, where this refers to the human birth, a particular human existence that is endowed with eight types of leisure, being free of unfavorable conditions and being endowed with ten types of special, special opportunities, <coughs> those 18 conditions all together are the, so the best possibility to continue on on the path to full awakening and for that reason they are called the supreme working basis. <laughs> Now it is not enough to just merely have obtained that so-called supreme working basis of the 18 conditions of leisure and endowments. Moreover, we indispensably need the to be endowed with devotion with joyful effort and with intelligence. Then it happens that the number of you, Tabo, Ledam, Jibu, the Echepa, Ledel, the Echepa, then it Jibu, Sanjay, Changshu, Sanjay, Changshu, the Echepa, then it Sanjay, Chu, Gindi, Jusum, the Echepa, Shabasum. Now, to talk about the first of those three, devotion. Devotion is usually described in three different aspects that also are named confidence, or trust. It's the trust, first of all, in the law of cause and result related to our own action, karma. Secondly, it's the trust in the possibility to reach the supreme state of awakening of the Buddha. Thirdly, it is the trust in the presence of the qualities of the noble uh, body, speech, and mind of the Buddhas. So, although there are those three types or three fields of application of devotion and trust, these, the, those can manifest in two ways. The one is called the blind faith or the blind trusts, indicating that it is a state of mental obscuration where we just feel trust or confidence without any good reason for that. Now, this state of mind is not very stable. Though. Much better is the second type of confidence, trust, devotion, that results from a thorough knowledge about what one should have the trust and 
con confidence too. And knowing very well the indications why something is true or not, and then develop confidence in that. Or knowing very well the supreme qualities of the Buddha, the, this body, speech and mind, so that here one is delighted in one's heart and knows all the indications for the presence of those um, qualities. Then, based on this precise knowledge and inner delight to feel devotion, is supreme devotion, once that devotion has arisen in one's mind stream, it is very stable. <laughs> The second quality that we should be endowed here after devotion is called the joyful effort or the, the, the readiness to work and this is the opposite of the mental state of inertness we do not, where we do not engage in the opportunities to positive action. So this um, state of mind, this is joyful effort, does not mean that we push ourselves in the sense of um, just mere out of diligence, but it rather means that we are deeply in our hearts delighted about the opportunity to do something good for others. So it's the joy about the opportunity of virtue that overwhelms us and encourages us along the path. Then the now we come to the third quality that we should be endowed with for the working basis and this is called intelligence or precise knowledge and there are many types of knowledge or intelligence of course but the type of intelligence meant here is the intelligence that is able to evaluate, scrutinize all phenomena of this life and this world. This intelligence able to check and to test all phenomena for their truth is the intelligence that will lead us along the path to full awakening. <laughs> And also it is said that to totally overcome all our mental afflictions and states of disturbed mind, we need indispensably this intelligence that is able to scrutinize all the phenomena of this world and this life. <coughs> Now, the next thing, when for the outer conditions, we're endowed well with the leisure and the, the various um, equipments of the human existence. Moreover, our mental state is the proper way of endowed with devotion, joyful effort and intelligence. This all would not be sufficient because on our own we're not able to know exactly which way to go, in what way we can enrich our positive qualities, what are the skillful means to abandon our bad habits. We actually need to depend on a good friend who has already experience and knowledge to show us the way. And this friend that is able to 
increase our positive qualities is a true friend, a genuine friend, a spiritual friend that we have to meet and to follow. Now, just to meet this spiritual friend alone will not do any good because the whole point of meeting him is to obtain his advice and instruction. You want to take, you want to, sh um, you want to enjoy the knowledge that he can, con um, that he can bring us into our hearts in the way that this knowledge that he passes on to us has to be appropriate to our present state of mind, has to be suitable to our character and our wishes. It has to consider that for the time being we are not able to understand everything, so we need a kind of introductory explanation, but finally we need the ultimate explanation to know what really definitely is true and genuine. So all those various <coughs> facets of knowledge is what we have to obtain from our spiritual friend. <laughs> Just to merely hear the knowledge and the information that the spiritual friend passes on to us will not do any good if we do not integrate this information into our lives. This is referred to by the line and the verse saying for the correct accomplishment or the correct mm, practice of this, may there be no hindrance, and the correct accomplishment is actually the threefold process of taking in the information by properly hearing what has been said, then thoroughly thinking over the meaning so that one arrives at the at a certainty on one's own part, and thirdly, to familiarize oneself with the meaning that one has that way thoroughly understood. Listening, reflecting, and familiarization, this is the threefold process which is called the correct adoption of the advice of the spiritual friend. <laughs> Now, when we are in the process of adopting the meaning of the spiritual friend's advice, there may be hinder hindrances. Those hindrances could be of outer type, such as the outer elements, could be of human or of non-human kind. There could be inner hindrances as illness or as the manifestation of our mental afflictions. And secret or hidden hindrances by the various thoughts, and concepts, ideas that overwhelm us. So here the wish is that our process of truly adopting the advice of the spiritual friend into our lives may not be probably stopped by those types of outer, inner and hidden hindrances. <laughs> Last line summarizes the meaning by saying that such a supreme and excellent working basis for the achievement of full awakening, with all those endowments, with being free of all hindrances, I may experience throughout all my lifetimes in such a way 
that I constantly enjoy myself with the genuine information of Dharma. Kaniba Lam Tokji Shira Tokji Shira Tatila Mamala Luri Tube Mishi Dimitro Nana Sambe Tesum Nana Chong Bonzo Luigi Tibi Chisinsa Shira Sudi Nama Jeva Shop. So we come to the next step here, which is the wish that we form in our hearts for the intelligence that makes us recognize the path. And the verse here says, having learned the Buddha word and all the logical consequences. May I be liberated from the fog of not knowing. And well considered the hard advices, the darkness of doubts, maybe the black pitch darkness of doubts may be dispelled. By the light that arises from familiarizing myself with that, may the basic nature of being be enlightened just as it is. May it be clarified, lucid, clear, just as it is. In such a way, may the splendor of the three in types of intelligence expand. Marazo Maripa Mesheba Maripa Mesheba Tigrezana, the name Tuba Tuba is a member of the Nishumari. Tendo Mashepa Maripe Doxo T, the name Sheba the Sheba Kuyore, Sheba the Sheba de Tambu, Sanjay Sunsha Beka, Lung, the name Kalayam, the Sanjay Shanus on the Kana, the name Jesu Jagarpa, we will have to continue to make a Ketu Sanjay on the Teju. Then <clears throat> now, if it was our goal to remove the basic state of unawareness or ignorance, then first of all this is a state of not knowing, because we are not in the state of true knowledge, of true awareness of what actually is. So to approach that removal of the basic unawareness or ignorance, we need to remove the state of not knowing, as a lack of knowledge that we are, find ourselves in, first of all. And this lack of knowledge is removed by taking in the proper information that here comes from the word of the Buddha. It is all the information that the Buddha has left in this world. And moreover, it is all that which those followers of the Buddha, the great masters of the past, and the, the, the scholars and the siddhas, have summarized and expressed in a way of commentary that we can understand better the word of the Buddha. So all this is we have to take in, have to learn as a method to remove our lack of knowledge. Not only that, we also need the tools to thoroughly understand the meaning of those words, which are the various types of logical consequence, so that we will understand what the Buddhist word actually means and has as a consequence for us and our lives. So both of that, the information from the Buddha and all this follows, plus the logical consequence, the art of reasoning, is what we need to learn. And those will serve as a skillful means to remove our lack of knowledge. 
and thus being liberated from this mental layer of this veil of, of not knowing, we are able to proceed along the path to remove basic ignorance. Secondly, after the intelligence of learning, we need the intelligence of reflection that is based on top of all what we have learned on the instructions of our spiritual friend. Those instructions we need on top of the Buddha word and all the logical consequences that derive from that, because not everything can can be inferred just by thinking over it, by, by knowing the, the word of the Buddha. At times, it is not clear whether the Buddha has said something, meant it literally like that, or it was just an introductory meaning. The spiritual friend will clarify this for us. Also, within the explanation of Tanta, there are four modes of explanation and so forth, which the spiritual friend has to clarify, which is not the object of mere learning knowledge and logical consequence. So based on all that, then, we have to use our own reflection, thinking process, and this will give rise to the intelligence of thinking that is able to destroy the pitch black darkness of our doubts. Thirdly, we need the type of intelligence that arises from the process of familiarization. Making oneself familiar with that, what all, with the meaning of all what we have learned. And moreover, we consider with our own thoughts that we arrived at a certainty. And this, the meaning of that is the, the, the dependently arisen mere appearance, the basic nature, and by being able to merely rest within that, to familiarize oneself with this basic nature, this is dependently arisen the appearance, then the light of intelligence rises that is able to elucidate the basic nature just as it is. Here we find the presentation in this verse of the prayer of the three types of intelligence, of the intelligence of learning, of the intelligence of reflecting, of the intelligence of familiarization presented in that very order. However, this order is not of a definite <coughs> type because it is oriented at the um, at students that follow the progressive order of a path, those students who need a slow, steady progression in their learning, those individuals who in their very life, in this very life, are so specially gifted that they are called the ones who are able to understand in just one instant, those individuals do not necessarily have to depend on this order of the three types of intelligence. <laughs> Chuba Medal Namanda. Chuba Medal Namde, 
강력히 내용 보고하려서는 딱지 타서 능이 이해했던 누구 타자 손이 남초기 쓰지 타자 등이 내도배 고주매 대출 남차가셔. Now the next step is that we wish for a path to go that is free from deception, a path free of delusion or deception, <coughs> and the wish describes this type of path, saying that free from the extremes of something there be permanent or totally extinguished, the two truths, two validities are what is the reality of the basic nature. Free from the extremes of exaggeration and denial, the two accumulations are the supreme path through which that which is free from the extremes of this seeming world and just mere peace, the two benefits are obtained as a result. May I meet such a Dharma that is a path in that way free from any um, possibility or up to go astray. 다디 지금 당부되기 지금 당부되기 시작 지인들로 맞춰봤다니도 시작 지인들로 맞춰봤다 지금 이바되기 두제 남지 인양에 맞춰봤다 순바되기 두제 안지부 내가 맞춰봤다 봐 대수인들의 생각도 Here we find that this verse presents us the, the, the option of being free from deception and error related to three different fields. For one, there's a description how to be free of error and deception in relation to what basically there is. Secondly, it is to be free of error and deception in relation to what we consider as a path. And thirdly, to be free of error and deception in relation to what is the result of that path. 다들 당부대 때문에 준비된 대마다 당부대 대마다 대마니 이래 대마니 그니 수양 다고 시야가 당부대 주인이 돼 다고 다고 다 체벌 나라에 주인이 다 하고 그요. 네 언제나 된다 된다 십일째도 다치기 다치기 타니 난 자유에 대해 대마니 그니 수양 다고 시야 그요. 대마 다치기 타니 대 주인 대 마시나 대 대니 그니 so to understand what is the basic nature, what really there is, this is expressed in the in form of the two types of validity, of truth. So it means what is valid just in the sense of the mere appearance of this world, and what is valid in the sense of the true reality of that. So it's the seeming reality, the seeming truth, and this what is the what is true in the actual genuine way of reality. Those two types of validity or truth we have to understand, but to do so we need first to rid ourselves of two types of misconception. And those are two types of extreme ideas that we entertain. For one, the idea that something is there permanently, either permanently there, or something else is completely gone, extinguished. So it's the idea of permanence and extinction that bothers our mind. And as long as we do not understand that those two types of ideas, preconceptions, are just an error, are a mistake, then we have no way to rid ourselves from that, and then we cannot understand what, is the, what are the two truths. There's one. The Hindu da, then a kunjot demba, the then a chu tamje rang xinjie ma zhu fa, chu tamje rang xinjie ma zhu na yang, then a kunjot to chu tamje demba zhen na wa. The kunjot demba, kunjot demba zhen na yang. The ha ma wo yun de nang sa mi ma ha ma wo ne de rang xinjie zhu fa de de wu san de da ba na, da ba na.
to, to talk about the, tr the truths of the appearance of this world. Although behind the appearance of this world there is nothing to be found as a true existence on its own path. There's nothing behind the mere appearance of this world that arises in dependence. It's an interdependent arisal of mere appearance. However, if we do not understand that and we take the appearance of this world for true and real, then we are trapped in the belief of that there is something permanent. This is the, the fixed idea of permanence, to believe that something is really there, although it is just a mere appearance arising in interdependence. So now, as talking about the ultimate truth, then whatever arises in this world and this life is mere appearance without anything behind there. It's an empty appearance. The very the fact that there isn't anything to be found behind the appearance of this world and this life is called the emptiness of this appearance. And due to this emptiness, precisely everything can appear in an interdependent way. It is actually through the emptiness that the interdependent appearance can occur. Without being empty, there was no interdependent arisal of what merely seems to be there. And if instead, now I think, well, there is actually nothing behind those appearances, so it's merely empty, and I cling to the fixed idea of mere emptiness, and deny the arisal of whatever seems to be there in interdependence out of that emptiness, then I'm trapped in the idea of extinction thinking that everything is gone and not there anymore. The Hindu Tapra Nave Jun Tapra Nava is not Tapra Tava Tapra Tava Tapanava Kuzutan Matin Separ Tava Tapanava Tene Tundan Kuzutama Separ Tava Jun Pambala Kuzutan Matin Tapra Nave Jun Pambala Tundan Matin The Hindu Tendu get the Bani Tin or Sosor Soma by Yanya Nanka or the Yu Sundu in your name. The so now, this is the explanation of the two types of truth, so what is valid in relation to two types of misconception. <coughs> and to remove our fixed idea of that something is there, we need to be told the truth of ultimate reality, which points out that there is nothing behind, nothing to be found behind the mere appearance of this world. So this is a mere and empty appearance. This removes our misconception to think that something is there. To get rid of the idea of extinction, that something is gone and completely not there, we need to understand the truth of mere appearance, that although being empty, the mere appearance arises in an 
in the dependent and very clear and precise way. Those are the two truths to remove those two types of misconception, extreme attitudes of mind. And those two truths are always be in union. We have to practice them in union. To practice them in union means to understand that they are actually not separable. It's not that we have two separate types of truths that we have to bring together, like we have two threads of uh, two types of thread that we kind of roll into each other. It is describing what really is on by two different aspects to get rid of two types of misconception. And Vipam Rinpoche has explained that in a way saying that seeing the, the, uh, the interdependent or mere appearance, it proves to be empty. By being empty, the interdependent appearance, mere appearance arises, as can be seen in the appearance of the moon and the surface of water. When we look at the surface of water and there we find the image of the moon clearly to be seen, there is no moon in the water. There's no need for the moon to be in the water there. So it's the mere clear appearance of the moon. However, that clear appearance of the moon does not mean the, that the moon is there in the water. This is the ultimate truth, the truth of the true reality, that there's nothing behind that mere appearance. <coughs> On the other hand, without the need of having the moon fall into the water, still the image of the moon can appear lucidly clear. This is the truth of the interdependent arisal of mere appearance, the truth of the seeming reality. Ja, vielleicht sollten wir es dabei bewenden lassen für heute, sagt Samuchi, und wenn jetzt noch Fragen wären, dann seien Sie willkommen. Questions are allowed.